Good morning all. Nothing here. Nothing here. Well, apart from this stuff, light, because this video is all about light, specifically light from my desk lamp. So I've got the blinds closed and I've got my desk lamp switched on. Let's switch that off. Yes, it goes dark. And uh, it's also got these different color LEDs. So you can have a sort of cool white, a mixed color or a warm white. Let's take a closer look. So if I zoom away, you can see where the uh, phone is normally mounted on that microphone stand with a uh, tripod head thing. But there's the desk lamp. It's an overhead um, LED lamp with different modes. Uh, here are the buttons. Quite controversial this lamp was actually when I first got it. Don't know if you, whether you remember that. I do. Now I don't use this lamp much um, because normally I like to work with daylight. So as I say, I've shut the blinds just for the moment. But um, when I do work in the evening, then it's quite nice to have this overhead lamp. But it does pr pr produce this rather sort of stark pool of light. And uh, I was wondering whether that might be uh, helped by having a second desk lamp. But uh, let's just have a look at this first desk lamp for a moment. Here it is sort of folded up so you can see it. I've also removed the heavy weighted base. There's the uh, lamp bit and that rotates and all that sort of stuff. Um, and this one is powered through this socket here. It's a 2.1 millimeter socket um, by 12 volts. Now I'm pretty sure this came with a 12 volt mains power supply, but I've never used it because I use my 12 volts from my solar power system. Uh, here it is. It's actually currently 13 volts because it's sort of overcast today. It's overcast every day. Let's switch this on. You've got these nice touch switches uh, that comes on. And then, as I say, you've got these different sort of color, warm white LEDs, uh, cold white LEDs. And that one, I think, is a mix of warm and cold. Um, so that's fine. Now, my solar power system. Let's have a little quick look at my solar power system. So um, this connector here goes back to here where it goes to a cigarette uh, plug socket thing. There's a, a voltage monitor there, 13 volts. Um, the black and red wires actually go through a trapped thing through the window and that goes outside. Let's go outside. And uh, those wires come out here. They go down here through a fuse and into these crop clips onto these bus bars. And uh, under this rather manky cover, we've got, oh, what's that? Six gel lead acid batteries all in parallel. They're all starting, the bolts are all starting to go a bit rusty there. Put my camera back on auto exposure. Um, yeah, that's starting to look a bit nasty. Um, these sit on a shelf. They're charged through this cable here, which comes from uh, three of my PWM5 solar charge controllers, only one of which is still working. They're fed by these two Twin and Earth mains cables, which run along here and up here, I think, and across here. And uh, they run across the guttering here and uh, they drop down here and then they run along here through this little uh, gap between the wall and the fence and uh, they come along here behind this shed and then they uh, come into this angled topped uh, tool shed which has some amorphous uh, very old maplin solar panels it I've, I've no idea whether they're any of those are still actually working uh, the wires come out of there. All that's in there actually is a load of connectors. Wires come out of there. They go over this bit of tree, come down here, and eventually up to the left-hand solar panel, which is still on my solar panel frame. Uh, the right-hand one fell off recently. Oh, look! Daffodils! Spring must have sprung! Yes, I think we've finally got through the worst of the winter. Uh, these three deep cycle marine batteries, massive things, oh, 110 amp hours each, they're all in parallel, are connected through to a 
little 2 watt Maplin solar panel. So they're going to take a long time to charge. They're completely irrelevant to this story. And uh, so that is how I'm able to have 13 volts on this plug. But it sometimes can be as high as 14.4 volts because those charge controllers out there go into um, a sort of burst mode in the morning where they uh, raise the voltage a bit to um, pep up the energy inside those lead acid batteries. Now I've determined that this thing, even though it was supplied with um, a 12 volt power supply, is entirely happy with 14.4 volts and it doesn't seem to affect the brightness. There must be some sort of DC to DC conversion going in, on in here or at least regulation. Um, there is a DC to DC converter because it's got a, a USB 5 volt output. So um, this thing is quite happy running anywhere between, I don't know, 11 volts and 14.4, no problem. Now, this is where the problems may start. I bought this uh, from Lidl. It's the Livano Lux LED desk lamp. 74% more efficient. Actually, what does it say? 74% less energy. Oh, that'll upset Anvil Shock, won't it? Um, yeah, so this is the uh, Livano Lux model. It has a similar weighted base. Oh, the controls look like they're down on the base there. A sort of arm and then the LED thing coming across. I don't know whether this has got... Um, oh, yes, it's got five-step light colour options. So this probably also has a mix of uh, cold white and warm white LEDs. But when I was in the shop, they had one of these. This one's still sealed, but they had one of these which um, some of the uh, customers had just completely torn apart. And the power supply, um, I seem to remember, was a bit of a concern. Let's have a look inside. Let's open up my completely sealed Livano Lux desk LED lamp and see what we've got. Well, okay, similar sort of thing. My concern was over this thing, the um, powering supply. Cut that. I think I'm right in remembering that this has a funny voltage. Yes, there it is. 10 volts at 1.2 amps. 10 volts? Why 10 volts? And uh, here you can see on the label it says LED Tisch Leuchter. Uh, dieses Netztar, this power supply, eignet sich nur for, is only for um, these models. Oh, it says it in English there. Right, here it is, all sort of with its covers still on, um, because they don't want scratched versions of this. Now, there's the input. Uh, it is center positive, isn't it? Yeah, at least it's center positive. Um, actually, there's a USB 5 volt output there, so there must be some sort of um, switch mode, you know, regulation, step down thing. But let's plug this into the mains and just uh, verify that this works. So 10 volts, center positive, plug it in. Uh, what's happened? There's the on off switch. Oh yeah, that's come on. And then, mm, what's that? That's the change mode. Yeah, so that's changing. Oh, cracky, that goes really warm white. So cold white and five steps through to a very warm white. Camera's probably adjusting its white balance a bit as I speak. But yeah, that all works fine on 10 volts. The question is, is this going to work on 13 volts? Oh, this power supply is really horrible. It's buzzing like anything. Listen to it. If I put that on the microphone of my phone, you should be able to hear that buzzing. That's awful. Oh, this is fun. Look, I've uh, lowered the exposure. Those are the cool white LEDs. And if I press the switching through mode, you can see, no, if I could get my finger on the touch switch you can see how it switches through to the warm white leds that's really quite fun so what's my concern here well let's draw something down on here oh i could use this desk lamp as some um, additional lighting for doing this drawing let's uh, bend that arm up yeah that's good well my concern is this to be honest i'm becoming less and less concerned now that um i've seen this sort of uh, brightness control. Actually, there is um, a brightness slider here. Yeah, I can... Oh, actually, that's um, touch and hold. Look at that. I can raise the brightness. Hang on, let me just 
lock the exposure. I can lower the brightness and I can raise the brightness. Why isn't the exposure locked? Lock the exposure, that's it. Lower the brightness and raise the brightness. Now, given that it's sort of being controlled brightness and the LEDs, the, the different colors of LEDs, I'm not con so concerned, but this was my original concern. You've got three LEDs, white LEDs in series. This is typically how uh, systems that use 12 volts work. Oh, that's a bit bright, isn't it? Um, okay, and these are, I don't know, three volts each, let's say. So you've got your 12 volts here, or 10 volts in the case of uh, this unit, and you've got a resistor here to ground. Now let's say that these are three volts, so we've got nine volts of forward voltage drop across the LEDs. That leaves three volts, these are three volts each, so that's nine volts there, and that leaves three volts um, across that resistor. Now, if that 12 volts suddenly becomes 14 and a half volts, this three volts goes uh, up to five and a half volts. And let's say it goes up to six. You can see that the current through that resistor using Ohm's law would actually double if the voltage across it were to double. So the voltage power supply here doesn't need to double. It only needs to increase by a small amount. But because the voltage drop across the diodes is relatively fixed, it will vary a little bit uh, due to different current, you get this massive change in current through the resistor. So the current through the LEDs um, can double even with just a few volts change on the power supply. Now I'm not so concerned now because I've seen this um, is regulating brightness using obviously some sort of, uh, well I would imagine, switch mode technique. So there are two ways to test this really. Um, one is to take it all apart, see how it's wired up. It's probably got some sort of controller in there. It may not have a chip number on it. Um, the other one is just to sort of shove 12 volts in and see what happens. Yeah, so I mean on the back it says um, input 10 volts, 1.2 amps. There's no sort of variation. There's no a range of voltages given there. Power supply adapter output is 10 volts, 1.2 amps. I suppose one thing I could do is measure the output of that power adapter, but I mean, that's going to be pretty accurate. Um, this thing cost £11.50, so is it worth the risk? Um, how easily would this thing come apart to look inside? You know, I'm just tempted to go for it and see what happens. I mean, if there's a problem, then um, this becomes a repair video, doesn't it? This could be a teardown video if I could be bothered to take this apart, but I'm not sure I can. But if it blows up, well, yeah, we can try and fix it. Okay, here we go then. Here's the um, connector, which has currently 13 volts on it. Let's plug it in. Well, it hasn't blown up with the thing off. Let's switch it on. Well, it's fine. That's absolutely fine. Um, let me lower the exposure of the camera, switch it through its various modes. Yeah, so that's the cool white. Um, that's the warm white. And that all seems to be fine. Let's raise the brightness. Let's raise the brightness. Um, if I lock the exposure on the camera, take the brightness down. That's fine. Raise the brightness up. That's fine. Now the uh, voltage on my um, measurement device now says 12.5. Actually, if I take the brightness down, yeah, that shot straight back up to 13. That all seems to be fine. Let's try the USB output. I've got a little lamp here. Oh, that didn't fit in there very well. But uh, yeah, that's come on. So that presumably is regulating the uh, 13 volts down to 5 volts without any problem. Well, I think we've got a winner here. That's not getting hot, is it? No, it doesn't seem to be. Yes, I mean, for £11.50, the only thing that I was really bothered about was that peculiar 10 volt power supply, but um, that doesn't seem to be a problem. I mean, only time will tell, because there's no sun today, whether this will actually tolerate the full 14.4. But I would imagine if there's any switch mode electronics in there at all, 
then, you know, if it can handle 13, it can handle 14. Stands to reason. Now, there's just one more thing I need, and I think it's going to be in here. Um, no, it's not that one, because that's a female to two females. Uh, what's that? that would, I can do male to two females. No, that's no good. Uh, not that... Oh, that looks... Well, that's what I want. I want a female to two males so that I can split my power and send it to both lamps. That one does look a bit noddy. Uh, I'm sure I had a thicker one here. Ah, what's this? Uh, oh, well, I suppose I could use that. That's um, a female to five male plugs. It's a bit wasteful, but let's use that just for the moment. Ah, no, I found it. This is the one I wanted. Um, it's a female to two males reasonably thick and a nice bit of length to it. So let's plug both lamps in. Right, let's lower the blinds so that we uh, can work with artificial light. Switch on uh, the new lamp. That's there, we can bring the brightness down a bit. Switch on the old lamp, that's there. Let's put that in uh, study. Yes, yeah, study is the cool white. Yes, yeah, so and now you can see that we've got sort of two Let's reset the exposure. Um, two kind of highlighted areas of light um, rather than that single one. That does look better for filming. So if I take my camera out of its um, mount, you can see this is the arrangement. I've got the two lamps uh, now creating a much more even spread of light uh, rather than the one I had before. And that 10 volt lamp seems to be working fine. Well, okay, it does have a slightly twitchy um, capacitive touch sensor. If I bring that down and then let go, well, that was before bouncing. Oh, there it is, bouncing back up when I let go. So if I slide, if I take it down and slide my finger to the left, it doesn't bounce back up. But I mean, what do you want? This was cheap, £11.50. Yeah, it does irritate me just a little bit when you buy something and the input socket says 12 volts, 12 volts and nothing else. And quite clearly it's uh, perfectly able to take more than that, maybe not far more, but uh, certainly within a range of voltages. Why don't they specify that range for people like me who have solar powered workbenches? I don't know. Cheerio.